thanking God for another Sabbath day morning. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm quite sure that all those who were in Sunday school this morning enjoyed the word. Amen. 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 Enjoyed what the Lord is saying to us. You know, you need guidance. We yeah. need guidance in this life. Oh, yes. oh, Even yes. when you're traveling, you need a map. In times like these, you need a GPS system because things change so much. Yes. And it's rapidly changing day by day. You need guidance. And what yeah. more can you have for your soul, your mind, and your heart is God's word. Yeah. Nothing can take the place of God's word for your life. Uh, King Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That will keep you. And I know anybody in their right mind don't want to go to hell. No, I know in their right mind. And those who are saying, well, I'm going to hell anyway, they don't know what they're saying. They do not know what they're saying. So at this time, for the overview and he's, he's, he's not going to preach. He's just bringing it over here. Uh, Deacon Edward Smith. And I just want to say that we'll hear the uh, announcement uh, later that we will have the homegoing uh, services for his wife, Mother Sharon Smith, who was dutiful in the service of the Lord. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because she carried on from under the pastorage of our late pastor, Dr. C.J. C. Anderson. Yeah. Right on in over here. She, yeah. It was a continent that she continued to do what she has done mostly all of her life. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I'll, I'll be talking about that. Uh, we, gonna, we plan to have a great celebration. Yeah. 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 All right. At this time, Deacon Smith, he's been an old warrior here. I, I believe he's, he is the senior. Yeah. <laughs> senior. <laughs> yeah, so at this time, uh, and, and uh, you're talking about spiritual power and growth that God has blessed him after coming out of that, over that, uh, that Red Sea of COVID. Right. Oh, yes. At this time, Deacon Smith. But in obedience to God and double honor to our pastor, Dr. Scott, to our visitors, to all that is present, we're grateful to God for this opportunity uh, to give expression, an overview of our Sunday school lesson this morning, which is taken from Psalm 107, 1 through 9, 39 through 43. And our subject matter this morning is Give thanks for deliverance. Yes, yes. Give thanks for deliverance. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. Yes. Uh, all scriptures. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Lord is revealing to David how to be thankful for deliverance. The commentary says that this might be, scripture might have been founded upon the remembrance how God delivered the children of Israel out of the Babylonian captivity. And he's saying because of what God has done, all of us have had some Babylonian experience. Yes. Yes. But God is a deliverer. Yes. Yes. And he's, David is saying, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, yes. for he is good. Yes. That is a whole message within itself. Yes. Give thanks to God for he is good. Yes, he is. Even in our imperfection, God is still good. Yes, he is. When we fall short of what we should do, it does not change God. God is still good. That's right. For he said his mercy endureth forever. In other words, his mercy doesn't run out. David used his mercy. Abraham used his mercy. Isaac used his mercy. It never runs out. He got mercy for me today and for you Amen. because his mercy never runs out. And then he said, this is for us as Christians. Yes. Let the Redeemers yes. 
of the Lord say so. Yes. If you've been redeemed, mm -hmm. if God has done anything for you, yes. and he has, mm -hmm. you ought to let the world know that God is your redeemer. Yes. It is God that brought you out of That's your situation. Right. Right. It is God that holds you in these times of trouble. Yes. It is all about God. It's, I give. I thank God for the hospital. I thank God for the doctors. I yeah, thank yeah. God for the nurse. But it's God yeah. who give them the knowledge yeah. to how to treat us yeah. as individuals. It all comes from God. Yeah. He says, so uh, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Uh -huh. God, I thank you for what you are doing. Yeah. And then he said, uh, he gathered them from the east and from the west. Come out his children from the north and from the south. Yeah, yeah. In other words, God know where you are. Yeah. So right. even though you're going through something, God know where you are. Yes, he I was on my uh, cell phone the other day and they asked me for my password. I didn't. I couldn't remember that password. <laughs> but God know our password. Yeah. He know uh, what we need. He know your address. He know your zip code. He know exactly where you are. And you know what? He loves you so much, he comes to see about you. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're able to get up in the morning. Yeah. We're in our right mind. Yeah. We're strengthening our body. Yes. Because God knows where we are. Yeah. And he's the one that delivered yeah. He said. And they wandered around. They just wandered around. When you don't know God, you know you wonder. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you don't know God and the part yeah. of your sin, yeah. there's something about your soul. You long for something. Yeah. Something is missing. Yeah. But Something is missing, and when that something is missing, it never is satisfied until you give your life to Christ. Yes, sir. If you give your life to Christ, he fills that void that's in your life. Yes. Then he said they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. They cried unto the Lord in the time of their trouble. Yes. That's telling me when they, you're going through something, yes. it's good to call a friend. Yes. Ain't nothing wrong with asking someone we call God first. Yes, sir. When you're going through something, remember who's able to get you out of it. Call God first. Yes. When you're trouble in your home, on your job, when that boss went out, call God. Yes. You don't have to get in a fight, fist the cup with anyone. No, no. But call God. Yes. When you're having trouble in your home, in your community, call God. It's all about God. He is the one that makes the difference in our life. And he said they led them by the way of night in their habitation. Oh, if men would praise God. That's the key to it. If we would praise God, even in our trouble, praise Him. When you're down and out, praise Him. Even when you're doing well. Some people forget God, Pastor. When things go well in their life, they forget that when they were down. I was thinking the other day when I was first came out here, I only had two shirts for yeah, yeah. My wife would wash one at night so I could wear it the next day. Yeah. Now that I got shirt, I don't want to forget where the Lord brought me from right. so I can praise him now. So don't forget what God has brought you when you were going from one house to another trying to find a place to sleep. And now you have a home. Praise God. Yeah. When you get, didn't have a car and ain't clear with the AC transit was your means of transportation, you got a car now and doing well. Praise God. Yeah. Don't get so high and mighty that you forget to know who God is and what yeah. he has done in your life. Yes. So we owe him the praise. Yeah. St. John, we owe him the praise. Yeah. Do you remember when we was at the Buttercup? Do you remember when we were at Monterey Pines? Yeah. Do you remember when we was going here and there and all of that kind of stuff? Now we at 985 53rd Street, church paid for, we owe him the praise. Yeah. We owe him the praise. We need to lift him up every day. I know it seems like it's a redundant thing, but I've been reading about Abraham Isaac all of my Christian life, and I haven't got tired yet. I'm not getting tired of telling us what the Lord has done for this congregation or how he brought us. It was a tough, tough time, but God brought us. So this lesson is said, because he has delivered us, we owe him the praise. Yes. Oh, I tell you, Pastor, I've said it a lot of times. When I was in that hospital, yeah. and I couldn't get my breath, and now I'm able to stand and pray. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to give some praise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know that it might not be kosher for people to talk loud, but I owe God this praise. Yeah. I want to open my mouth and let him know yes. what he has done and let somebody else know how good my God is. Yeah. He is a good God. Yeah. He is a loving God. Yeah. He is a kind God. Yeah. He is a merciful God. Yeah. He is a delivering God. Yeah. I owe him the praise. This is the conclusion of the overview of the Sunday School. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, that was wonderful. Amen. And he is 
absolutely right. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And he's worthy to be praised. Now, we want to thank Deacon Smith for doing a wonderful job. And you know, I wouldn't miss Sunday school for nothing. That's the teaching part. <laughs> it's amazing how some will, they want to go to church and they want to get there and shout, but they don't want to be taught. Right. Yeah, you got to know what you what you shouting about. Right. Yes. Well, I got my way, and well, God got His way too. Right. He wants you to praise Him. He yes. wants you to learn more about Him, yes. so that you can rejoice and yes. receive yes. the blessings. All right, we're going to go on now. I'm going to we're going to stand. We're going into, and I just want to say this before. You may stand on your feet. We're going to go into our morning services. Amen. I want to say to uh, Michelle Armstrong and family, I, I received a call yesterday from one of the former track girls that I coached years ago, Sonique Sabetra. Um, And she told me that Michelle Armstrong's father passed on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he was a great uh, supporter of our program. And uh, he stuck right there by this All right. humble servant when I was coaching and teaching them. Mm -hmm. And I'm, 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 that's been some 21 years ago. They, they, they stuck right there. He, I was so glad to hear her great testimony, which I will not go into when we talked yesterday. And I'm glad this morning to have one of, uh, she's like one of my daughters. Um, her grandfather was very, very supportive and the grandmother, the whole family. Uh, her sister, her aunt rather, was in one of my classes some years ago. That's been back in 1974, 70, somewhere around in that era. All right. And she's here today. She's, Amen. yeah, I'm so glad. Danielle. Amen. Yeah, Danielle. Is it Ross? Ross Parker. Ross Parker. Yeah. And she's with us today. And I'm yeah. so glad Amen. Amen. with her little ones. And you know, God is awesome. Yes. Yes. My late pastor yes. would say, mountains never meet, yes. but men all, right. all time all right. yes. meet again. Yes. Yes. We have a list here as we go into our morning services. Have over 107 names on this prayer list in which uh, we have our bereaved, all bereaved, and uh, sick and afflicted, we're still praying for Sister Audrey and yeah. Yeah. Sister Phyllis. Sister Phyllis, yeah. girl, I was so elated to hear what your mother said. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. How the Lord is touching your body. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about getting up walking. Mm -hmm. Her yeah. to the elevator. Now that's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. What you've gone through. Yeah. yeah. Some get shot one time and, and they're gone. Yeah. But look at what God has done for you six times. And here God had mercy upon you. That's just a great, great, merciful thing. Yeah. Pray it for you. Let us pray as the organist will pray, play, play, just as I am. All wise and almighty God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Mary's baby. The King of kings and Lord of lords. 
We come in your precious name, Lord Jesus, praying to the Father for these names that are on this prayer list. And those desire to have their names on this prayer list. You know where they are. Yes, Lord. Remember Denise tonight. Yes, Lord. Remember Denise. You know where she is. You know what she needs. And the other young man that wrote me who's incarcerated. Many of those, all those that have written me, Lord, look upon their life. Look upon them in the name of Jesus. Look upon these names that are on this prayer list and on our prayer board. You know their condition. You know their hearts. You know their minds. Your heart fixer, your mind regulator. Nobody can do what you can do for the soul, and for the heart, and for the mind, and for the spirit. You created us, you made us. You know all about us. And we come in behalf. Those who are praying with us and those who are desiring prayer, prayer and praying with us, Lord, please to hear our prayer and call God, for them in the name of Jesus. Mercy. You're merciful. You're compassionate. Yes, Lord. You healed the sick. You raised the dead. Oh, yeah. You oh, gave yeah. sight to the blind. Oh, yes, God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, Thank you for your presence. Yes, Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for life everlasting. How great thou art. Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Holy is your name. We pray for these who are under the sound of my voice this morning. You know their hearts, you know the minds. Create in us a clean heart. Yes. Renew a right spirit. Yes, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. That you will be pleased. Yes, oh, my Lord, my Lord. And Master, as we travel this Christian road, yes, Lord. oh God, thank you for your presence. Thank you, God. Thank you for your holy word. Thank you for thank your you holy God. spirit. Thank you. Thank, you God. thank you, God. Blessed be the name yes, of the Lord. Yes, Lord. You brought us over that through that uh, Red Sea of COVID. Yes. Oh, yes, you did. Yes. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. You healed. You brought us, Lord. Yes. We too, like others, could have been gone. Yes. But you blessed and had mercy upon yes. us. Yes. Master, we, we just welcome your Holy Spirit this yes. morning. Yes. Look upon those who are alive, streaming with us. Bless them at the same time. Bless them, Lord. Your mind regulator. Remember Roscoe. Remember our homeless. Have mercy. Our members who are, Lord. Yes, God. Bless them, we pray thee. Have mercy. Now, Lord, when this life we pray comes to the end of our journey, yes, Lord. oh God. We pray that just any place in your holy kingdom where every day will be Sunday, Sabbath will have no end. We pray that you receive our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes.
St. John, uh, we already been vaccinated. Right. We, yeah. we have taken care of that, but yet we want to also be protective right. of, of one another. You can still have the vaccine and get the COVID. Right. But we want to uh, 
seek people where they'd be comfortable, but yet not on top of one another. And we're not going to crowd everybody in. We, we'll have these doors open. We have seats here and seats out there Amen. where it'd be accommodating. Amen. 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 All right. We, of course, the family got this priority, seating first. Amen. 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 The choirs will be sitting in the choir stand to help uh, with the seating arrangements. Amen. But let me tell you, we're going to have a good time. Amen. Be it the Lord's will, we should live. Amen. Yeah. It's not hard to speak words over a, a saint who Amen. has gone, has Amen. done their duty, Amen. responsibility. Amen. It's very hard, and you can't find words for those who wasn't in the church. Right. It's hard. You can't, can't, you can't make, you can't put people in heaven. They preach their own funeral. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's why I say get in the church. Yes. Stay in the church. Yes. Stay with the Lord. Yes. Don't be hippity hoppity. Right. Right. Yeah. Work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. It's just a blessing to be a child of God. Yes. 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 And that's one thing about Mother Sharon Smith. She wasn't afraid to tell people she was a Christian. Right. <laughs> right. Right. She let you know right. yeah. Yeah. what she believed, she believed. Right. Yeah. 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 Deep rooted in, in the word. Yeah. All right. God bless you. Yeah. And so we, we plan on, and, and one thing about it, I don't know if the family wants live stream, but we're not, we're not going to lie. You want to live stream? You want to live stream? Well, we're live streaming. Amen. Well, I didn't have I didn't have a mind to do it, but if you want to do it, Deacon, we'll do it. Amen. All right. Uh, some people they're inquisitive. We call it nosy, but they say inquisitive. But we'll we'll let them because we're gonna have a good time anyway. Amen. 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 A child of God's hope going celebration not sad, no, no. gloomy. Yet we have mixed emotions. Right. Don't get that wrong. Yeah. We're still human. Right. And we still have pain Amen. in the heart. Yeah. But you know yeah. they're going on home. Yeah. Be, that's, that's a great blessing. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you, us is, us is here. Yeah. Better strive to get there. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Jesus said, don't, weep. don't be weeping and crying for me. Right. Right. He would cry. Yeah. It's a joy to know. Yes. You can go back in yes. memories. All you know is Mother Smith. She's a teacher. Amen. Yeah, all right. Amen. Our first selection by the special is Mother Sharon Smith. All give grace unto the Lord. Amen. Our next selection, Your Grace, led by Sister Alicia Wimbush, followed by He's Coming Soon, led by our pastor, Dr. Scott and Sister Veronica George. Then we will sing, I Came to Tell You, by Deacon Edward Smith. Yeah. And our final selection, God is on our side. Amen. Amen. Sing good, too.
Many people don't realize that what we are experiencing is the closing of this world by God. Yes. The end is on its way. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. God's going to destroy this world yes. by fire. Yes. That uh, saying that man is going to destroy the world. Yes. We got nine years left. Global warming. I don't you believe that? Amen. Man can't destroy this world. Right. He can kill himself. But he can't destroy the world. God created the world. Yes. And he's the one going to destroy it because of sin, yes. unrighteousness. Jesus is going to appear in midair. He's not yes. going to come back to earth. Appear, and those that have been dead will be caught up yes. first to meet him. Yes. And those that are left after them will be caught up yes. forever. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. Oh, and I just want to remind you who are are listening. Don't waste time. Time is very valuable now yes. for your soul. Yes, sir. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon, working and waiting, oh come, there's still room, no man knows the hour, when we'll see the groom, soon coming for his bride, he's coming soon, let me say that again. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Working and waiting. Oh, come, there's still room. No man knows the hour when we'll see the groom. Soon coming for his bride. He's coming soon. So Mary, don't wait. Dear mother, why won't Say that, say that. Say that I am too late. But I say you're wrong. Yeah, yeah.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your holy sight. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. For his name's sake and amen. amen. I want to say good morning once again to you. What a glorious opportunity to, to have this praise time. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. We have this praise time. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses six through seven. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses six 
through seven is our all important message for this morning. Right. Deacon Smith and choirs and Sister Alicia and Sister Veronica and all the choirs and specials. God bless you. Amen. 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 Enjoy the theology through song this morning. Yeah. The Bible says, as Paul speaks to us through the scriptures, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Yes. I have fought a good fight. Yeah. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Yes. We're going to talk about fighting this morning. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. I listened to the news this morning in passing how uh, apparently, apparently uh, there was shooting and cutting. My word, they fight for the wrong cause. The subject this morning is finishing the good fight of faith. You may be seated. Now, there is there are mixed, as you know, when the child of God, you know, when the sons of the God met together, Satan was in the midst. So you got to have, if it wouldn't be successful church, if he wouldn't be sticking his little head up. You can feel some things. When, and this is where the fight of faith comes in. Where you got to open your mouth and praise God. Yes. Yes. Irregardless if the person is next to you or dead, you'd be lying. Yes. This is the time to fight. Yes. When we commonly mention, as we speak about fighting, mm -hmm. we commonly think of fisticuffs, mm -hmm. boxing, UFC fights, gangland, mafias, murder, and so forth, uh, boxing. Mm, yes. For you who do not now know the meaning of fisticuffs, who do not know the meaning of fisticuffs, mm -hmm. that means fighting with balled up hands mm -hmm. to make it as hard as you can. So that in your anger or in the art of boxing or in a Taekwondo style competition, mm -hmm. you can hit your opponent so hard until he or she quits or is completely knocked out. Right. Right. In the above mentioned daily, weekly, and continuing yearly cases, one will eventually become injured beyond repair, yeah. where they will have to stop boxing as an amateur or professional prize fighter. Mm -hmm. The same goes for the popular UFC professionals that uh, have kickboxing and fisticuffs at the same time as well as wrestling, they eventually will come to a halt in their life. And when Father Time saps the well uh, strength out of your body and the desire in the physical uh, limbs and you begin to regress from uh, strength to weakness, yeah. the slowing of your reflections, the take of more 
physical aches and pains where arthritis, arthritis sets in that forces all fighters into retirement. They try and they try to come back, but Father Time says it's time to quit. This leaves only a season of past memories to reflect back on what you did in the season you had the strength. Yeah, right. Or they had the strength. But yeah. not so in the Apostle Paul's case. Uh -huh. right. It has been noted that by theologians that the Apostle Paul suffered a severe, a severe lifelong eye problem. Yes. That's what they suggested during his fight of faith. Some theologians believe that the apostle's greatest suffering was his limping as he walked. Yes. All right. But we uh, we really do not know whether it was his eye problem or his limb or his thorn in the flesh to him by Satan. We don't know, right. but it was bothering him. Yes, that's right. It was bothering him, so he went to the Lord right. that he might remove this daily painful thorn. Right, right. And of course, we all know very painful thorns can be very uh, excruciating in the body. Yes, yes it hurts. The Lord did not remove this piercing, agonizing, satanic, painful thorn that agonized and, and hurt Paul. And, and he was fighting against it daily. But the Lord said in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 9, 12th chapter, verse 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. All right, all right. Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities yeah, right. that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. You see, the apostle Paul never retired mm -mm. from his God-given yeah. responsibilities. Yeah. Even though it was painful throughout his life that Jesus would be glorified. He never retired. Uh, when Satan, when, when Paul, his name was Saul at first. But when he met Jesus, he changed his name from Saul to Paul on the road to Damascus. Gave him an order to go down and Meet uh, Ananias. Uh -huh. yeah. You know the story. Yeah. None of the apostles ever retired from teaching no. and preaching the good news. Yeah. Right. No, no, none of them retired. Yeah. No. Uh, let's let's be perfectly clear. As long as this world stands, uh, there will always be fighting somewhere yes. in this world. Somewhere. I don't understand why pe pe uh, preachers retire and they want to go on vacations. That's good. But you don't retire from where God puts you. And being in the last days, Jesus himself says in the gospel book of St. Matthew and the 24th chapter, verse 6, he says, and ye shall hear a war and rumors right. of wars. Right. See that you be not troubled. Right. For all these things must come to pass. Yes. But the end is not yet. Yes. So there's going to be wars yes. and rumors of wars. Yes. Regardless of what yes. people say, I'm in peace, but there's war going on. Yes. Before the fighting even took place in the earth, mm -hmm. or on the earth, there was a fight a war in heaven yes. where Revelations the 12th chapter verse 7 and 9 
in the King James Version says, and there was war in heaven. Are you praying with me? Yes. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and, uh, and his angels were cast out with him. The easy reader version says then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Yes. The dragon and his angels fought back, yes. but they were not strong enough. The dragon and his angels lost their place in heaven. Yes. It was thrown down out of heaven. Yes. This giant dragon is that old snake, yes. the one called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world into the wrong way. Yeah. The dragon yeah. and his angels were thrown to the earth. Yeah. So, being angry with God, yeah. talking about the devil, and continuously is, being the father of lies, yeah. talking about Satan, the devil, uh, he deceived Mother Eve yeah. by telling her that the Lord God was keeping her from the truth. Right, right. When in actuality, the serpent, the devil, yeah. the dragon, mm -hmm. the deceiver, yes. was actually in actuality lying to her right. to get her to transgress. Right. 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 Listen to Genesis I got a lot of scripture this morning. Right. Right. Yeah. Third chapter, verses one through seven. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. He put the adjective in there, surely. You shall not sh surely die, but for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, small g-o-d-s, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for fruit, uh, food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. Now the easy reader version says, the snake was the most clever of all the wild animals that yeah, yeah. the Lord God had made. Yes. The snake spoke to the woman and said, Woman, did God call, really tell you that you must not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman answered the snake, No, we can eat fruit from the trees in the garden. Now see how sneaky he is? But there is one tree we must not eat of from. God told us you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Yes. 
You must not even touch that tree. Mm. You, 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 will, you will die. But the snake said to the woman, you will not die. God knows that if you eat the fruit of that tree, you will learn about good and evil. And then you will be like God. God's. The woman could see that the tree was beautiful and the fruit looked so good to eat. And this is the easy reader version. Yeah, I had some flaws here, but we're going to go on. So she liked the idea that it would make her wise. So she took some of the fruit from the tree and ate it. Her husband was there with her, so she gave him some of the fruit. Yes. Now the Bible didn't say, now the King James Version didn't say that he was there. No. no. But anyway, we're just going to read this and go on. The essence of this, the devil is a deceitful person. Yes. The de deceitful. Yes. Now, let's see if God, the Lord, lied to Adam. Or did the serpent, the devil, lie in deceiving Mother Eve. Let's see. For in Genesis, the book of the generations of Adam, meaning man, says in the fifth chapter, verse four and five, and the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth mm -hmm. were 800 years yes. and he begot sons and daughters. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And all the days that Adam lived mm -hmm. were 930 years and the next two words he died. Yeah. Yeah. Now who lied? The devil deceived. Yes. Let, me, let me move on. I have a lot more here. It was the father of lies. Yes. Talking about the serpent. Yes. The old dragon. The devil. Yes. Satan. Who was a murderer from the beginning. Yes. Who deceived. Influenced. Came to kill his brother. Yes. Abel. Mm. Who lied to mother Eve. Yes. Who actually in actuality, deceived, distorted yeah. the truth right. and lied to Mother Eve. Right. It was just the opposite of what the devil said to Eve would happen. Uh -huh. right. 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 Yeah. How many times have things looked so good? Right. Satan right. paints the picture. Right. And when you get it, you say, oh, this is not right. It's not what I thought it was. Right. Mm -hmm. But lest we stray and begin to bird walk into pigeon holes, let's go back to Genesis, the third chapter, where the Lord God is holding court on their deadly transgression of the law, the word, the Lord God's law. Let's, let's, let's tune in. And hear this major uh, court sentencing upon the guilty parties. Let, let us tune in and, and listen carefully to what uh, the Lord God says about fighting uh, wars. Uh -huh. uh, verses 9 through 15, chapter 3 of Genesis. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that thou shouldest not eat. Are you listening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lord is holding court now. Yeah. And the man said, the woman. Now here goes the blame game. Yeah. 
the woman whom you gave me. Yeah, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou you have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me. He tricked me and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent. Now listen to these words. We're talking about fighting. We're talking about war. Mm -hmm. uh, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Above, upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. That means war. That means we're going to have fighting while we're in this body. Now, you may not ever see a, a physical snake approaching you. You may not ever have to kill a snake. But let me tell you, the snake is ever present. He's invisible, but he's ever powerful. His name is devil. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Don't have time now, but Paul talks about that over in uh, his epistle. Every since the Lord God declared war on the serpent, that old dragon, the devil, man has been at war ever since, fighting to keep good health against bad health, fighting to keep healthy gums, yeah, so that your teeth will not fall out. Don't you know that you can get a poison in your gums and it go into your heart? Uh, fighting to keep healthy teeth that they may not rotten against bad infected teeth and gums that you will not have a, uh, an infection that will kill you. Fighting to keep alive and, and avoiding death as much as humanly possible. Saint and sinner are still fighting. No human has been exempt from fighting. But it is our humanly choice whose side we will choose to fight on. Only there's two sides that you can choose to fight on. Yeah, you can fight on the Lord's side or you can fight on the devil's side. Only two sides that we can consciously or unconsciously uh, continue to fight in this warfare every day. So many say that they don't fight anybody. They are not in any war. Well, whether you know it or not, I am here to tell you that every day that you live, you are going to have to choose to fight or not fight against doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. You got to fight. People say, uh, I'm good. Well, what is good to you may not be good to God. Whether uh, toward your husband or whether toward your wife, whether toward your boyfriend or girlfriend, sometimes, somewhere, you're going to have a fight. Yeah, if it's nothing but words that you're going to exchange. You are going to have to choose your words. You're going to have to choose what side you're going to be on. Whether it's going to be on the right side or the wrong side. Yeah, you are going 
to have to choose to fight against being deceived or you're going to have to choose God's way. You are going to have to fight against laziness or being lazy. Some lay in the bed till 10 and 12 o'clock. Yeah, because they just have the privilege to lay there. Mm -hmm. Laziness will kill you. Even though you're laying in bed, it will kill you. It will kill your desires to do uh, for yourself. It will kill your desires to get up and go to work. The Apostle Paul tells us that there is a constant war going on inside of us every day. Uh, the Apostle in Romans, the 7th chapter, verses 21 through 23 says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is always with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Uh, the easy reader version says, so I have learned that this rule, when I want to do good, evil is there with me. In my mind, I am uh, happy with God's law. But I, I see another member warring in my body. That law makes war against the law that's in my mind. Yeah, that, that other law working in my body is the law of sin. And, and that law makes me, uh, it's, uh, it's a prisoner. Oh, there, that's what we always uh, have to fight with. We have to fight with this lust that's in our flesh. You got a war going on right against wrong and wrong against right. I said earlier, some people say, I don't fight anybody. Oh, they're, they're fighting. They're, they're actually fighting against righteousness or they're fighting against wrong. There's no exemption in life. You got to choose Every day, who you want to fight with? Oh, there, oh, there is not only a fight, but a war that is going on within each and every one of us. King David says in Psalms 51 and verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. The easy reader version says I was uh, born to do wrong. A, a, a sinner before I left my mother's womb. So you got to fight on your hand. It didn't start with you. Uh, let me move on here. I got something to tell you later on. So we are born in war. We are born in war. Is that right? We are shaped to fight against God. Is that right? Or whether we are with adultery or fornication, we are, we are using, uh, Satan is using this to fight against God. Whether you're an adulterer, you're a fornicator, you're a liar, you're lying in darkness of fear, are you lying, are you walking in depression, that's still, you are to fight against coming out by faith. Yeah, we are born sinners and the release uh, the only freedom from our sin shaped life is through Jesus Christ the only way that we can get out of our bondage the only way that we can win this battle when we want to do right is to have faith and walk with Jesus let the Lord work in your heart oh, I'm trying to tell you how to be a winner in life. You can't win by having dark thoughts and evil imaginations. You're going to hell. Only way you can get out of that is to believe in Jesus and let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
Am I right about it? St. Paul says in Romans, the seventh chapter, verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the Lord of God, the Lord God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is therefore now uh, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Every morning, that's why I get up praising God, because I can't do without him. I need him when I get out of bed to walk with me. I need him when I think about the goodness of his good. Satan will put a, a, a nasty thought in your mind. But when the mind of Christ is there, you can say, oh no, I'm not going to think that way. God will regulate your mind. You got a well on your hand. Every day, you need to pray faithfully. You need to read your Bible earnestly that you can fight the good fight of faith. Now, my question to you today is don't you want to be released from your sin bound life? life? Mm -hmm. Well I certainly did. Don't you want to stay free from your past sin bound life? And my answer is certainly yes. Then believe in Jesus. Walk daily by faith in Jesus. Live in Jesus and you will uh, win the most important fight in this life long war for your soul what would it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul the fight in this warfare between heaven and hell is for your soul let me just rephrase that for my soul and your soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your soul. My soul must spend eternity somewhere. I have chosen where my soul is going. Yeah. It's going where Jesus is. The Lord God through Christ Jesus will have more souls in heaven uh, than Satan will have in damnation. You just Fight hard to be on the winning side, yes. the Lord God's side, yes. and you will win uh, your soul to heaven. Right. Don't you want to go to heaven? Yes, How many yes. want to go to heaven? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Heaven yes. is a place where uh, you want to, you really want to go. Uh, our main character this morning is the apostle Paul. Yes, the Apostle Paul was a great warrior in the faith. Uh, St. Paul warfare uh, experience lets us know in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, yes. verses 8 through 11, which he says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be uh, made manifest in our body. For we uh, which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal uh, flesh. 2 Corinthians 11 chapter verses 23 through 20. I know I got a lot of scripture this morning, but this is what saves the soul. I'm trying to tell you, we're in a warfare. The hooping will come later. Just bear with me, because you got to know that you are in a warfare. Mm -hmm. This Christian life is just not throwing up a handkerchief and saying hallelujah, amen. We are in a warfare. And you got to know your enemy. His name is devil. 
Paul says, all they uh, ministers of Christ, he said, I speak as a fool. I am more in labor, more abundant in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in deaths often of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Three times was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings, uh, often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by, my, uh, by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Oh, he was in a fight. He had a fight. Sister and brother, you got to fight. Don't be uneasy because you got to fight with uh, daily. You, you wonder when, where, when I'm going to get some rest from this. You in a fight. God will be with you. The Lord will sustain you. God will hold you. God will strengthen you. Just stay right there. Paul says, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger, in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Yeah, of the church. Then go to the epistle of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 10, where Paul says, finally. Are you with me, brother? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. He continues in encouraging the church of the Lord Jesus Christ how to be prepared and be dressed for this warfare of faith. Where he says in Ephesians the sixth chapter, verse 10 through 18, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wires, that's trickery of the devil. You're in a fight. You got to realize you're in a fight. Stop being a, 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 a baby in this fight. I tell the, the, the boys and the track team, you can't be a, a little puppy running with big dogs. You got to dress up for this fight. You got to know that you got a deadly enemy for your soul. For we wrestle, Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all just to stand. Yeah, just God will hold you. You won't fall when God got you. You won't fall when Jesus holds you. Stand therefore, having your Lord's girt about with truth. Tell the truth at all times. And having on the best plate of righteousness. Do right at all times and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yeah, you don't want to fight anybody on this side. Yeah, above all, take uh, the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the weekend, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's your sword. Yeah. That's why you got to read the word. The word is your sword. Praying always with all prayer. Supplication in the spirit. Watching uh, thereunto with all perseverance. 
and supplication for all saints as I come to the close of this message. Are you listening? I want to hear some amens. If you want the Lord to come in and answer your prayer, you come on, get with me. Yeah, you come on and with your amen. Heaven is, is listening. Heaven is at war with the devil. We're on the Lord's side. And I should hear your amen. I should hear you saying yes. Yes, as I come to the close of this message, I just cannot help but to mention Mother Sharon Smith, a great warrior who stuck her sword in the sand of time to study war no more. She was a warrior in the faith. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. A teacher by profession for many years, fighting and educating those vulnerable life little ones before Satan could get a hold of them and teach them the ignorance of the world. Mm -hmm. She was a warrior against unbelief in the army of the Lord in Sunday school as she was a teacher. Uh, we don't have our celebration, but let me just mention this. She was a warrior. Uh -huh. And of course, a, a major directress over Vacation Bible School for many years who certainly fought against ignorance. Mm -hmm. uh, the homegoing celebration of her legacy is on our calendar. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. But let me move on. Mother Smith and I uh, can certainly testify uh, that she certainly helped me uh, doing Great St. John. Oh, Lord. All right, since uh, you're waiting on November the 10th, let me move on. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't mean uh, with uh, uh, rapping in spirituality. She was modern day, but she was on time. Not with this rapping in, in music now. Not dressing down. She taught the children how. Mm -hmm. Yes, and take in talking to Dr. J. Alfred Smith the other day in my office. I often call him to uh, just to remind him that I haven't forgotten about him. He was the one who ordained me some 21 years ago. You don't forget the bridge that brought you over. Mm -hmm. Some people forget you when you get older in age and you can't do, can't run the streets like you used to do. But I don't forget who helped me. I was talking with Dr. J. Alfred Smith. Yeah, the former renowned pastor of Allen Temple Missionary Baptist Church. You know him. I mentioned to him as I sat at my desk that I was preparing my message for Sunday and being the old warrior as he was, he asked me, what are you going to preach about? And I told him that I was going to preach about uh, fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, he said, yeah, that's Timothy. Uh, the second chapter, verse four. He, and he went on to say, let me tell you, uh, you just don't have to win the war. Uh, you don't have to win the war. You just fight a good fight. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to the close now. Yeah. He said, you don't have to win the fight. You just fight a good fight. Mm -hmm. I thank you. I said, I thank you, sir, for those enlightening words. He was right. Just fight the good fight of faith. Because the battle will not be won until... The horn blows. Yeah. Uh, there's some in the grave awaiting now. They fought a good fight. Read Hebrews 11 chapter. Yeah. All through the chapter. They didn't win the war, but they fought a good fight of faith. That's what we're doing right now. Fighting the good fight of faith. 
You can't win the battle, but the war will be won by Jesus Christ. Yeah! All we do is fight the good fight of faith. I just want to uh, follow up on what the apostle uh, Paul, great testimony, says about fighting the good fight. Second Timothy, the uh, fourth chapter, and verse seven, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Yeah, I have kept the faith. Yes, uh, you don't have to win. Just fight a good fight against apathy, against laziness, against fighting against depression, fighting against uh, sickness, fighting in any stress or uh, over situations. You just fight a good fight because Satan is going to try to bring it upon you. You just fight a good fight. I have finished my course, Paul says. Every track and field runner has a lane to stay in. If you don't stay in your lane, you will be disqualified. Church, whatever course that the Lord has given you to do, do it. Just stay in your lane. Even in Sunday, in school, there are levels of courses that students take. Stay with the, uh, the Lord Jesus in learning what he wants you to know and implement that. You, you, you may be a freshman in the work of the Lord. Do your best. Fight the good fight. You may be a sophomore, junior, or senior. For, your ne uh, for you never get too old to serve the Lord. Just stay in, on your course. He has your course already charted and planned. Mm -hmm. You just fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. And stay the course. The Apostle Paul finished his dynamic testimony in this verse by saying, I have kept the faith. Mm, many have walked away from the old path. But let people talk about you. You just stay your course and fight the good fight of faith. Let them be scorners. You just fight the good fight of faith and stay your course. Just stay out of their presence and let the wicked talk against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You just fight a good fight and hold the banner of Jesus high. Mm -hmm. At the higher uh, level of learning, institutions, college, universities, the goal is to graduate. The goal is to have the governor's seal to confirm that you are qualified and you have had a good fight. You have finished your course. You have kept the faith. Don't stop there. He went on, uh, Paul went on to say the most climatic, uh, most exhilarating, most important part of the heavenly graduation. He says in verse 8, his fourth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which is the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me, uh, but unto uh, all them also that love his appearing. Hallelujah. He will call. Yes. I want to say, uh, I want to say, uh, let me just pause here and, and, and say what my late pastor used to climax his message with. He says, uh, Jesus. He will call the seven clouds of the rainbow. And form his chariot. He's gonna take the thunder for his chariot wheel and the lightning for his bridal rain, the wind for his prancing horse, uh, the atmosphere for his highway. He's gonna ride, gonna ride, stop in the land of us and shake old man Joe. Get up this morning, Joe, the warfare. The warfare is over. 
The walk pad is over. He's going to ride. Ride. Stop down in the land of Kiba and shake old man Ezekiel. Tell him to get up this morning. The warfare is over. Stop in the land of Babylon and shake old man Daniel. Get up, Daniel. Uh, the warfare is over. He's going to ride. He's going to ride. He's going to ride. He's going to ride. Stop down in Jerusalem. Shake old man Paul. Tell him to get up. Get up, Paul. You fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You, yes, you did. You finished your course. I don't know. Uh, like my pastor said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'll be. I don't know where I'll be. But I was in somewhere. Yes, I will. I don't know. I might be in the grave. I might be walking. But I don't know. I'll be listening. I'll be listening for my name. You have to say, Mommy's servant. 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 I was, I was at my daughter's. I was at my daughter's graduation. In 2000, at University USC, yes, and as I was sitting there, preparing for their graduation, I thought that they was going to just have one single line, just in my imagination, but as I sat there, Thousands of people were there. Uh -huh. yeah. Babies and children. As I sit there and I, the graduation began to, to start the music. Uh -huh. And when I saw the graduates coming in, yeah, yeah. they were not coming in in a single or twos. Uh -huh. They were coming from four squares. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. They were coming from the east. Yeah. Right. They were coming from the west. Right. They were coming from the north and the south. But the greatest, the one who was in front, was holding a banner. Yeah. They were holding a banner coming in. And I say, look at John. John saw a number that no man can number. Coming up from the east, coming up from the west, coming up from the north, coming up from the south. Yeah, I saw my daughter carrying the banner. I got happy. It was a graduation, but I got happy. God, thank you. We're going to be caught up. We're going to be caught up. The battle will be over. The war will be over. Graduation. Graduation. A crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness. Holy. 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 Holy.
crying in the morning. No more crying. 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 No more This is not a church of your choice. I'll give you a letter to the church of your choice. Yeah. Help him get the chairs out. You never know. Every soul needs a church home. Yeah. Yeah. You just can't be out of church right. and think God set it in the center of your side. Set the chairs. God love you so much. Until he calls you the expenses of salvation of his blood no one can pay for. All that know that you're truly converted and you are in good and regular standing with God's church. Just not You can't be, and I've had choir members. One day this warfare is gonna be over. Yes. You remember that white lady that stood there and I opened the doors of the church. Some are baptized, don't even know what they were baptized for. And she stood and she said, I've been working, I'm 60, what she say, she's 60 years old. Amen. She said, I've been working in the church lost. Mm -hmm. She said, I didn't know what I was doing when I was, I got in church. She came up. She got to understand it. Yeah. I said, do you want me to baptize you or do you like the church? She said, I like the church. I said, well, you go back to your pastor and tell him you want to be baptized. You know what you're doing. Some are baptized. Some parents just push the little child up there, go get baptized, not knowing. And later on, they will confront you and say, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And you just can't wonder, just be wondering in church in and out, going here and there. All that know that you're truly converted. And you are good and regular standing. And I've been there five months ago, eight months ago. You're not in church. Raise your hand high with mine. All hands are raised. That's one of them. You may be seated. There is room at the cross. Are you? God bless you until tonight. Until tonight. God bless you.